Hello, 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 Danny. Hello. How are you doing tonight? Doing all right. Ah, uh, so fun news. Cryptic actually got me the thumbnail early, so I don't have to worry about uploading it tomorrow. Yay. Nice. <laughs> so how has uh your week been so far, Danny? Busy. Busy indeed. Uh, I decided to not log into D2 for the past, like, three weeks. Number one, because of FAIR. Uh, and I was thinking about logging in this week, and then I saw on Twitter all of the error codes. Oh, yeah, no, they're being DDoSed. Yeah, so I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's not a good time to log in. And they're, they're still being DDoSed. Like, of all the gaming companies that someone would DDoS, why Bungie? Like, why? I, I I will never genuinely understand why people would DDoS Bungie. Like, of all gaming companies. Like, bro, EA is right there, dog. <laughs> yeah, there, there, are, <laughs> there are much worse companies. Yeah, there are so much worse companies. Also, I apologize... Uh, for those of you watching the video, Fiora decided to make a mess of my bed, and now she is sleeping, um, right there like the potato she is. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, no, it's just, I, I, I feel so bad for the Bungie devs right now. Like, they had Worlds First, Worlds First, by the way, again, went off without a hitch, thank God. Uh, new season, I've heard some good things about the story. And then it's they get all of a sudden scary. just get hit with this. Yep. And they've been feeling it for the past, what, two weeks now? It's like it started this past weekend with the uh, the crafting bug that blew up. Yeah, the crafting blug, uh, blug, blug, the fucking English. Um, yeah, I saw some, I, did they fix those, by the way? Yeah, no, they're fixed. If you try okay. to craft those combos now, it will automatically give you a weasel error and send you to orbit. That's fucking hysterical. That's funny. That's fucking funny. But damn, bro, I feel so bad for fucking Bungie right now. Jesus. It's like... The general consensus for a for like most of the community was that this weekend was some of the most fun that Sandbox has been in in a while. Yeah, cause because you could do shit that should bug. not exist. Yep. And they let they let us have fun. They ran trials. They didn't stop trials for it, <laughs> which was hilarious. That was <laughs> some of the most fun I think I've ever had in PvP. I think the only way that trials would have been more fun is if multiplex, if multiplex was the map. Yeah, which because of the issue, they are running the exact same map with Igneous Hammer again without the bug this time. Oh, so they're actually going to run it back two weeks in yep. a row? They are going to run it back. Same map, same rewards. You know what? I I'm kind of happy about that because I know that I know that a lot of people were kind of pissed off about the whole situation. So I'm like, you know what? Like, it's Bungie. They recognize what happened. They're like, yeah, this probably ruined. Though here's the weird part: they didn't do that for the weekend that Telesto, uh, <laughs> uh, decided to like one shot everything because they memed it so fucking hard. <laughs> they they did. It, no. it was a whole, it was kind of planned. That whole thing was planned. Yeah, Telesto being the number one used gun, like, bro, Bungie. God damn it, Bungie. Bunga, like, why? I will say, through all of this stuff going on this week, they're, uh, they've given us some stuff and we're eating good. I, I'm excited to go through the, uh, the TWAB. So let's go ahead and hop into that. Also, I apologize, the service alert, uh, is here. It's going to be there a while. It's going to be there, so I apologize. There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, now, talking about this week, uh, we have the Jump Master campaign has landed. Crafting shenanigans. What happened? We'll cover more exactly on everything that happened there. Uh, deterministic recoil. What is it, and why is it so heckin' cool? More secrets into Sabathun's Spire await. So we heard you wanted a Thorn Catalyst. 
Uh, the Pale Heart awaits. The team had a little too much fun with the new supers coming out in the final shape. A little bit of lo-fi makes everything better. Now with Eris. Prime Gaming update and Yeet the Smallin. Fun clip. So, for Veterans by Veterans. On Tuesday, the Bungie Foundation launched a veteran-focused campaign in par partnership with Team Rubicon to showcase support for those who ser serve and help provide humanitarian aid to communities facing crisis. The campaign, which runs until season tw until the end of Season 22, features an all-new emote designed in collaboration with veteran Bungie employees called Jumpmaster. All profits from the emote, available now in the Eververse, will be split equally between the Fungi Bungie Foundation and Team Rubicon. Uh, now, I will not play it, but basically, it's uh, the Jump Master is basically just issuing ghosts out of the the basically a uh, uh, a cargo plane, um, and it's it's a good emote. It's a yeah. really good emote. Now, remind me, uh, Danny, uh, what does Team Rubicon do? Team Rubicon is the disaster relief organization that actually gets out into locations before and after a lot of natural disasters. So, I think that's super cool. Um, again, Bungie Foundation doing more Bungie Foundation shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, it's in the store for uh, Bright Dust, correct? Or is it only I, available for Silver? I think it might only be Silver, but it's a 50-50 between Bungie and Team Rubicon. It's going yeah. towards contributing to disaster relief. Yeah, so it's, it's still... So even if you have to spend silver, you're still you're still donating to Team Rubicon, which is still cool. Um, uh, in addition to the emote, the Punji Foundation premiered their Clearing the Path film. This emotional story highlights the partnership with Team Rubicon, a special wildfire mitigation operation that Bungie employees and veterans took part in, as well as the personal story of one of our own veterans. It takes, uh, takes some time to watch the video and learn how Team Rubicon and the Bungie Foundation are supporting veterans and helping rebuild communities before and after uh disaster strikes you can watch the full film and more details on the campaign uh in last tuesday's blog which you can click right here uh along with that you've got this cute little emote uh and it looks like you can also get a is that a ghost pin yep that's an enamel ghost pin oh that's so cute that's actually so cute that's such a like that's such a fun little what's the word that i'm thinking of whimsical yeah that is very whimsical. So I love it. I also love that it, that it's the little heart inside of the ghost eye. <laughs> yep, the Bungie Foundation logo. The little ghost of the heart. I love it. Uh, the Craftening, uh, which I loved, by the way, that they named it the Craftening. Uh, the Craftening, uh, a larger problem than anticipated. Um, it right. Uh, so, and I'm just gonna kind of go ahead and basically let you kind of go over this danny because there's a lot to cover god there's a lot to cover Holy yeah I'm, fuck, how I'm large gonna, is this section damn i'm gonna have to give this a tldr yes please, uh, for dear those god, of dude. you that uh did not get to partake in this over the past weekend crafting was glitched and apparently it's something that's been around for a little while so like if you've noticed potentially if you've been one shot in pvp by a bow it might have been a little more to that than just, I don't know, that's, bows are strong. Or they were standing in an empowering if because uh, Reservoir Burst on a bow is kind of not okay. Reservoir, what does a Reservoir Burst do again? <sighs> uh, when you're in the top half of the magazine, it does more damage. It's usually only found on fusion rifles. <laughs> right, uh, but a bow has one shot, so it still counts on every shot. And, uh... Let's say you could potentially, in another slot, get Kill Clip on top of that. God, that's so gross. Always active. <laughs> Sickly. So, what happened is more people became aware of it, and people started putting aggressive frame shotgun on everything. So you had aggressive frame shotgun auto rifles, aggressive frame shotgun hand cannons, snipers. That's basically uh, the one with the giant slug, right? It's the one with the pellets. Oh, God. So uh, the, the funny thing is, when you put that frame on other weapons, it gets the range of the weapon you put it on. So there were auto rifles running around one-shotting people in Greasable. <laughs> 
Uh, there were linear fusions that were soloing raid bosses on master difficulty. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of silliness that happened. I recorded a few videos of my raid team going through. We did the entirety of Master Vogue in like half an hour. Jesus Christ. Wait, with the bugs? Yeah, with the bugs. Oh half my god. Half an hour for a Master Raid. It was kind of dumb how strong. We killed three uh, Gorgons with it. Like, it's not okay. It was not okay, but it was so funny. Uh, so, needless to say, after the weekend was over, because Bungie decided, we're not in the office, this is going to be a nightmare to deal with, just let them have fun with it. So, they left us to our own devices all weekend. And Which feel bad for everybody digging. playing Crucible and Trials. <laughs> oh yeah. However, there were a lot of people that finally got their flawlesses for the first time. Oh, yeah, imagine that, abusing a bug. Did you get your because... flawless? No, I didn't, but <laughs> I, uh, I got a bunch of engrams, and I actually got a pretty solid new role for an igneous, because funny uh, incandescent. <laughs> oh, nice. I was going to say, Danny, we still need to go for the flawless run in, in Trials at some point. Yeah, once once the servers like calm down. Yeah, agreed. Good, because as they mention here, they have a short term fix for live updates, which basically they can put in and make it change a few things in the game without shutting off the servers and booting everybody out. And they have a multiple step process, but they can only have one of these active at a time. If they try to do more than one, it will make things behave a little wonky. Due to that limitation, they decided that the best course of action was to disable crafted or enhanced weapons and disable the perks that aren't supposed to be on those. Which is what they ended up doing. They re-enabled crafted weapons after a bit, but they left those perks disabled if they're not supposed to be on something and they disabled the frames. So it fixed the funkiness of those. However, they started getting DDoSed after they applied the fix, which made the servers really unstable. The other thing that they did, because they threw, the, they threw this fix on here, it caused a lot of visual bugs. So weapons showed up in the UI like they weren't able to be equipped, but they were still able to be equipped, and perks were invisible or not active. There was a long list of visual things. Doesn't actually impact gameplay. They're still there. They're still their base weapons. It was a nightmare to fix, and even, I think, uh... I think Joe Blackburn even commented, like, Please refrain from asking your Destiny 2 server triage workers how their weekend was. <laughs> yeah, probably probably for the best. And the other issue with this is it has a potential to cause the UI to completely fail. So they have to be very careful with what they add to these fixes. Which is why it took them a little bit more time and they wanted to have everybody back in the office where they tried to fix it. Makes they a lot were, of sense. however, yeah, they did get the first fix up on Sunday, though. But from there, they have added another step to it to stop the exploit, so that you can't make those weapons anymore. And if you attempt to, it just boots you to orbit. That's their way of stopping that. <laughs> Because I will say, it was very easy to replicate that bug. Even on a strong PC, all you had to do was cap your frames to 30. And you could basically do it like every 5 or 6 attempts. You get the timing right. God, but now, so it's fixed. So thankfully, that won't be causing any issues. And... I kind of expect them to, one, give people an emblem at some point if they played Trials during that weekend. And two, potentially look into adding 
more craftable weapons and or more perks for the craftable weapons in the future. But please do not give res do not give reservoir burst to fucking bows. Please, for no. the love of God, that sounds no. miserable. <sighs> they did mention this as well. I think it was Destiny Tracker that mentioned it. The concurrent players of Destiny Two went up thirty percent this past weekend. <sighs> there yeah. were thirty percent more people playing Destiny this weekend because of that bug. You know what's crazy though, Danny, is they didn't take away the weapons that were already crafted they just disabled the perks on them yep they reverted them to perks that are supposed to be on the weapons oh, okay so they so, actually did revert all the disabled perks into actual perks yep they have been changed uh, to perks you can I, craft on I, the weapons. I would have laughed so hard because I wanted to see the crafting 2023 like YouTube incidents and you just see people's vaults just filled with weapons that just should not have perks because i think would that be... would have been so funny because i left three of them on in case they did disable them because when they disable weapons if you had them equipped you just don't have anything in that slot <laughs> so if you have three all you got is melee and abilities <laughs> <laughs> and that's fun but yeah, that was this weekend and the early part of this week because they actually fully didn't disable it until about Monday morning. But that's the that's the weekend they've been having, and it, it was fun. There's a lot of videos out there on YouTube about it if you want to see how crazy things got because there were shotgun grenade launchers with double mulligan oh, running what around the in fuck? PvP. No! Yeah. Yeah, no, that's when they realized, oh, oh, that's a big problem. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on. Uh, deterministic recoil. Uh, so, You know, I'm going to be honest, Danny, I might actually let you take this one, too, because I'm also a little kind of confused about exactly what this is. Yeah, I had to watch the video to understand what they were talking about, but if you look at the thumbnail of it, it basically shows you a little bit what they're talking about. They want to make weapons all have consistent recoil patterns, like with Abyss Defiant here in this video, it goes to the right, then comes back to the left, and then goes up. More weapons are going to behave similarly based on what season they come out in from this season forward. So it will be easier to counter that recoil when you know what direction it's going to kick it in. And the Q&A of this, there's specific weapons that are going to be affected by this, which they have a list. Auto rifles, pulse rifles, scout rifles, SMGs. Sidearms, hand cannons, trace rifles, and machine guns. So literally everything that's not fusion. Yep, and everything that's not fusion, bows, shotguns, sniper rifles, those will not be affected. But everything else will be, and they should actually feel a little bit more controllable after these changes, especially if you can get your recoil direction to 100 because that's the perfect sweet spot. Yeah, because that means and... that it stays roughly within the same circle, right? Yep. And they also kind of low-key confirmed that they're probably adding a trace rifle next season. Nice. I mean, the last trace rifle that we got was pretty solid. Uh, that was Aegis. They're Scepter. fun. Yeah, trace rifles are fun. Um, I don't really get to use mine a whole lot, but when I do... I keep it on for a while. It's it's kind of core in a lot of stasis builds, at least the Aegis Scepter one. The, I... the Trace Rifle before that that I think most people used was... Oh, God, what's the Dares of Eternity rifle? Retraced Path? Yep. That's a good one. There, there is the one from Season of the Seraph, which is low-key really strong because it has Bolt Shot and the Shoot to Loot. Ooh, that is a that's dirty. very good one. With those new shoot-to-loot setup? Ooh, yeah, ooh, that's dirty. 
Yeah, it's it's fun. You still have to reload to proc to proc volt shot, but shoot to loot on a trace rifle is really good. Oh yeah, because their ammo fucking mags their mags are so large. Yep. Have like nearly a hundred rounds in the mag. Yeah. So if you want to go watch the video on how deterministic recoil works, here you go. It's right here. We will yeah. not be showcasing it. Uh, and we'll be skipping. Is there anything in the Q and A that we need to pay attention to, or no? They they just talked about like the little things that I went over TLDR. That's what I've been trying to do with a lot of these because they are a little more like statistic minded. So it's a lot easier to process just getting to the point with it. Right. Uh. All right. Uh, curiosity may kill the cat, but what about the guardian? You've been exploring. Ah, god damn it! I got a hair in the corner of my mouth. Eh. Fuck. All right, I think I got it. You've been exploring the spire so much that you've discovered its deepest secrets. The mystical arcane chambers where Savathun turned trickery into power. You're free to explore, but try not to become a victim of your own curiosity. Pay extra attention as you make your way through Season of the Witch starting this week, Guardians. Some surprises are still waiting to be uncovered, and not all are easy to spot. Uh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Because that means we're probably getting close to the, uh, the mid-season exotic. Yes, I'm very excited for it. Uh, and I think and up next is uh, the other thing that you and I are very excited for, which is Thorn getting a catalyst. And they did a, they fed us well this week because they actually show us what it does. Yeah, uh, and because it's really hard to see from your guys' end as the viewer, uh, I'm going to read out exactly what the catalyst does. Uh, so, once you have the Thorn catalyst, uh, it grants bonus range and stability off the rip. Dealing a final blow or absorbing a remnant grants additional increased weapon range as well as increased mobility and handling for a short time. Um, that's pretty fucking good. And the range that's buff fancy. is is not small. Like, it is, it is a good chunk of that range. Also, I like the fact that it takes it up to 69 range. Exactly. Nice. That is, that is a spicy catalyst for Thorn. Yeah, and the fact that it can get even longer range... It might end up being one of the hand cannons with the longest possible range you can get for a hand cannon. Yeah, because let's see, what's up there? Um, Crimson. Crimson. Crimson actually does have an insane range. But it's also got really bad accuracy because of the recoil burst. Yep. The burst recoil. So Which is why like Warden's Law has crept up and really taken its place in PvP. Yeah. Uh ooh, wait. Ariana's Vow. Though yep. Ariana's is kinda special, number one because it's, it's a special a ammo. But yeah. yeah, it's I mean, for fuck's sake, they gave it anti barrier. Yep, it's anti barrier and it behaves very much like a high impact sniper. Yeah, I I still love the fact that I can shoot titans through their fucking barricades. That always feels good. Um, but yeah, no, I mean this is this is a pretty banger catalyst for Thorn. Uh giving it more range and stability, especially uh because it is a 140 RPM. Like, that's solid. And not just that. It's a 100 recoil direction. Yep. That's pretty fucking nuts. Like, Thorn is stable. It's, it's, it's very it's a, stable. It's a lot of people's kind of standard go-to exotic hand cannon. Right? Like, and it's, and it's, it's just good. It's just a good hand cannon. And this, this is spicy, Danny. Yep. And after the Monarch nerf, it kind of is even for damage over time. 
Lord forbid you're a fucking warlock with necrotic grips. Oh yeah, no, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this catalyst with necrotic grips. Yeah, that range is fucking absurd. The range, the mobility, and the handling. Like, that's a solid catalyst. Yeah, I mean, whoever whoever cooked this up at Bungie, stand up job, like yeah. absolutely, y'all 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 chefed the shit out of this. This is good. They this are they are good. cooking. They're like, I can't wait to see what comes out next season too. Oh yeah, please, Xenophage Catalyst when? Because like. Whoever's whoever they've got cooking right now at Bungie, let them keep cooking. They're they're going with it, and I like it. I mean, there have not been this may this may be a hot take, but I think all of the recent catalysts in the past, I would say six seasons, really good. Like the fact that they've like they buffed the catalyst on uh, well, they buffed Wicked Implement already. Yeah, because like, people fucking hated it because it was fucking miserable to use. It was and so now bad. It, like, it fits in a lot better now that just shooting stasis crystals will make them track and come to you now. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Because it means that you can actually get ability energy back if you're running those aspects and stuff. So, really good. I mean, there's, they've just made some really, really, really good catalysts recently. This They're cooking. Yeah, and, and like you said, whoever is cooking these up, keep letting them chef it in the kitchen. Like, whoever's chefing this shit up, spot on job. They're feeling it right now. Yep. Uh, bless your pale heart. You've been digging the lead up into the final ship so far. You're likely already seen the trailer below highlighting the pale heart. Uh, so this is basically just a preview of what the pale heart looks like. It's um, wild. It is definitely wild. Uh, so again, we will not be showing it here on the podcast, but, uh, please, if you want to go check it out. Uh, yeah. Uh, have you considered feeling like a total badass? Uh, during the Destiny 2 showcase earlier this year, we shared the first look at three new supers coming in the final ship. Twilight Arsenal for Titans, Purple Axe Go Bonk, Storm's Edge for Hunters, putting the edge in Edge Lord, and Song of Flame for Warlocks, which, let's be honest, that name sounds cool as heck. I like Song of Flame better than what they called it, which was Radiance. Um, because yeah, it's... because, like, that was D1s. Yeah, and it's and it's not the same as before. Obviously, number one, they didn't give Warlock self res. Still sad, but I, a, a brother can dream. I have seen all of these except the Hunters, surprisingly. I think Warlocks are going to be eating good this super. I, dear God, I hope so, and I just that, hope that Bungie doesn't fucking immediately nerf it into the ground. That sentient grenade is crazy. Yeah, I'm going to be very excited. Now, again, uh, they have all of the gameplays of each one lined up here. Uh, we will not be showing them. So if you want to see what they look like and to kind of mess around in the uh, in their sandbox, please watch the videos. Uh, have Lo-Fi will travel to total coziness with Eris. Danny, so I, I, I was talking to Danny... Uh, I think it was earlier this week. Was it earlier this week or when? When was I think it? It was Dave? like late last week. That's right. It was after stream or after after the uh, after we had recorded. I was uploading the video, and the first thing I see is Lo-Fi beats to tithe to, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> they they just randomly dropped this. I still have a lot and listen to it. Is it good? It is. It's remixed versions of songs that are in the game. It's good. Oh, I will. I will have to listen to that then. Um, again, will not be showing the video. Can they stop showing me goddamn videos? I don't want to get copyrighted. Frock. There, there was a lot in this one. Yeah, 
And then uh, they actually have some behind-the-scenes action of uh, Morla Gorondo uh, Gorondona. Goron Gorondona? I, I'm Morla, I'm sorry. I am probably butchering the fuck out of your last name, and I apologize. And the, uh, she is both doing the mocap and the voice of Eris. Yes. So that is exciting. You can go see uh -huh. the... the uh, uh, you can see all of the behind-the-scenes stuff here, uh, seeing all the different uh, mocap stuff. Like this is this is this is quite good, very yeah. very good. They put a lot of work into these scenes. Yeah, like and they just they look they look great. They just look. I mean, again, it's the amount of time and energy that goes into it to make those cutscenes look good. And think about this. After the Light and Darkness saga, they're probably going to put a little bit more time into doing this for the acts. For the episodes. Yeah, Since because there's also, not as many. And they're going to be a lot longer. So yep. they have more time to kind of fuck around and play with shit. Like, we're going to get some good stuff out of that. Because yeah, they're going to have more time to work with. Yeah. Also, this scene right here where she kneels down and she starts getting the hive armor. Oh, that scene was cold. That scene was tough, Danny. Oh. Yeah. Going oh, into this it was season. Dirty. Things I expected to happen. Eris becoming hive was for not one of them. A bit. That's uh no, that was definitely not what I was expecting. I was and here's the crazy part, Danny. I had a feeling that it was going to happen at some point or she was going to lean more into the Hive because she currently actively uses Hive magic, right? Yep. And so, obviously, with, you know, the, the Guardian learning more about the light and dark, right? Seeing more people use the dark, especially, right? Especially with the start of Lightfall with... Um. Oh my God, I can't think of his fucking Osiris yeah. getting using Strand, uh, and even before that, in Beyond Light, seeing Elsie use Stasis, right? Like seeing all these people use things that aren't the light, and we were like, "Is Hive magic usable?" And the only one that I could think of was Eris. And to see it actually get to take shape, I'm like, this is even better than I possibly could have imagined. Because number one, Morla absolutely murdered these fucking, these, these, these cutscenes. Like, absolutely knocked it the fuck out of the park. These cutscenes are so tough. They're so tough. Oh yeah, like, you can feel, like, the emotion in these. It's good. This season is good. Yeah. It's it's very very good. Now again, I haven't played in the past couple weeks simply because of uh, obviously working at fair, so I don't really get a chance to play on the weekends. Um, but I'm very excited to see more because I've only played the first week, so we'll see. Uh, moving on, primed up, we have a bunch of new shit going out. Uh, we have the consult the archives exotic emote, a curse of foresight exotic sparrow. The Edge of the World's Legendary Ship and the Methane Explorer Legendary Shader. Again, if you got Prime Gaming, pick up your free shit. No yeah. reason not to. It's free shit. That looks like some early like early season Sparrow and Ship. Yeah, it's the Curse of Foresight. I think this might be one of the ones that dropped during Curse of Osiris or something along those lines. I think it might actually be from Season of Un Undying. Ooh, you actually might be all right on that. The Edge of the World ship, though, that one kind of boggles me. I'm not sure where that one comes from. I, I want to say that's either Season 1 or 2, actually. Yeah. That's an, I want to say that's a very early D2 ship. Yeah, and then the Methane Explorer, that's actually... That's, that's a that's, Titan shader. Yeah, and number one, that's actually a relatively recent shader, too. Because take a look at the emblem at the top left. Yeah. That's... uh the Season of the Deep. Yeah, that's actually Season of the Deep. They're actually giving you the Season of the Deep shader 
now. So that's pretty dope. I'm fucking pretty hyped good. for that. Also, I love the fact that the uh, Consult the Archives exotic emote is in the Season of the Deep uh, diving armor. It's pretty good. Nice touch. Uh, and then we have a Yeet the Small One. To save you the horrors, I'm going to not show you the video. Uh, this is something that was made in-house during uh, Season of the Haunted. They were testing around with different items and assets. And uh, they figured out that the uh, some of the orbs you could create during that season, you could put the, the texture of a small one over it. I'm going to just only imagine, and I will be watching this video after the recording. It is wild to see some of the things they experiment with. Oh, yeah. Uh, player support report. Uh, I can only imagine. Yeah, I can see this shit. All right. So let's start off from the top. Igneous Hammer plus Javelin 4 returns. Uh, we already covered this earlier. Due to the weapon crafting issue, uh, season or, uh, Trials of Osiris will rerun both with Igneous Hammer as its uh, main weapon and Javelin 4 as the map. Uh, Master Crotas and Delay. After a delay from the intended Tuesday Los launch, the Master Crotas and Raid mode is now available for the release of Update 7.2.0.4. Essence of the Oversoul will also see an increase in drop rate. We covered that last week. Uh, and I know a lot of players are very happy about that. That was uh, today, that update. Yeah. Uh, Crota's End 48-hour challenge mode emblem. We are working to ensure players who completed the Crota's End challenge mode with the contest mode window are properly credited uh, with the all-for-one triumph and associated emblem. Additional updates will be provided when available. Again, this is the same as last week, just because there were so many people. And this is for most raids in general. They have to kind of take a little bit of time to make sure that everything goes through. Yep. Specifically because of... Uh, there were some problems with a triumph or two that weren't getting check marked when, in fact, you did clear said check mark. So, yep, there you go. And on top of all of the other stuff they've been having to deal with, that's probably Least dropped a little bit worse. in priority. Yeah. yeah. Now, note issues. We've got some new ones here, so let's get started on these. The Path of Burning Steps, Titan Exotic, and Associated Ornaments no longer change appearance when the Solar Weapon Surge perk is active. What the fuck did they change to? The only thing I can imagine is that they're not glowing when the perk's active, which, it's a visual bug. It's not game impacting, I don't think. Fair. Uh, the Hoarfrost Z... And ice and icefall mantle titan exotics are using the incorrect cooldowns. That's not good. Uh, when inspecting weapon details for items stored in player vaults, the weapon perk icons may no longer appear, probably due to the crafting incident. So, yep. Yeah, the rank seventy one weapon scrounger seasonal bonus displays is requiring ownership of the season pass, even if players already own the season pass. That's kind of bad. Uh, some players who did not fully complete the Season of the Deep Store missions may be blocked from completing the current Season of the Witch weekly store mission until they finish the previous season's story. Uh, returning players who did not fully complete the uh, Guardian Rises intro quest prior to the launch of Lightfall are unable to obtain the Learning Light quest. That's really fucking bad. Yeah, that one. That one's a little rough. Yeah, that's really rough. And multiple multiple pieces of arm armor can can cause obstructions when aiming down sights on the Tessellation Exotic Fusion Rifle. What, does it just, like, put the whole fucking arm in front of the goddamn body? I imagine it's something similar to Necrotic Grips with certain weapons, where the, uh... the ethereal mist thing kind of appears when it shouldn't be there. That makes a lot of sense. Uh... So, yeah, that's, uh... That's the... the uh, known issues... With our powers combined, Tessellation, probably movie of the week. Uh, Nezarek's Whisper, this is done by uh, Cinema Motions. So make sure to go watch that. Along with that, we have uh, Spider Guardian Across the Destiny Verse. Uh, this is by Joao Zaney. I apologize. Uh, that's a 
That's a really good thumbnail right there. I like that. That's that's some impressive uh, shader digging as well as uh, ornament searching because it takes a lot to make a hunter look like Spider-Man. Yeah, also, they actually nailed the bungee hoodie. Yep. That's wild. Uh, bonus movie of the week is... Uh, not here, but it's by Carolina DX, so go watch it's that. A, it's, it's a video a, on TikTok. Yeah. Along with that, Shine Bright Like a Witness Disciple, Artist of the Week. We've got uh we've got uh nope uh via Twitter and I will zoom out a little bit to make this a little bit Oh god damn it. Eh, scrolling, god damn it. Scroll all the way to the bottom. That is impressive. Yeah, that... What is that? I think it... It's either, like, beads? Or, like, maybe, like, rhinestones? Uh, they're not shining like rhinestones. I think you're right. These might be beads. Which, that's insane how much time probably went into that. It is beautiful, though. It is very, very well done. That's a that's a very good roll. That is a very good roll, indeed. Uh, and that's it. We're only going to get one art piece for the week. That's a little weird, but all right. So, yes, that is the TWAB. Uh, so, Danny, what's your uh, what's your favorite part of the, the TWAB this week? They uh they teased some good stuff coming next season. And the fact that they gave us like straight up what Thorn's catalyst is like either they've got another one coming for next season or they've got some spicy sandbox changes. I'm I'm kind of with you on that. I'm excited to see what they bring uh, to the table because there's a lot of good shit that they could do. I mean, there's a lot of guns yep. that number one, their catalyst should just flat out be reworked, and number two, yep, uh, there's a lot of guns that do need catalysts. Because we have a lot of exotic armor pieces that need some redoing because their main kit got fake in the subclasses, so they're just kind of pointless, like, um, what are they, nothing manacles. That's just basically in the kit right now. Oh yeah, and it really doesn't do much. Yep. So, those are something that I feel like will probably be prime target for a rework. Give them a little something extra to do with the Axion Bolt grenades be cool. I, I agree and with that. Let's see. Because I know there's a few exotic weapon catalysts that do need another look. I would love it if they would take another look at Darcy's, but I doubt they are since they God, already have once. please make Darcy's catalyst not fucking useless! They did say that they are going to be buffing snipers, which I think might have actually been this update. Can't remember. It's either this one or an upcoming one. Snipers are getting a buff in PvE for damage again. Which is great. I'd love to see snipers be an option again. Thank god. But I think we're gonna start getting that maybe about the midway point of the season. Yeah, we've got about a week or two before we hit that that midpoint. And then also, stasis buffs. Yes. I'm also very excited for stasis buffs. So, so I think we're going to be eating good for season 23. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, uh, Danny, where can they find you? Find me on YouTube and Twitch at Catbox Danny. You can also find me on Twitch and YouTube at Domini Fox or on Twitter at Domini Fox One. Uh, because I've been so busy, I haven't really been able to post on it. Uh, but uh, I've just finished a couple anime that, oh boy, you should definitely be watching now. Um, 
stay tuned for that. Uh, with that being said, thank you all so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, we both hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, don't be a sweat lord. We'll see you guys next time.